I think there should be a focus on simplicity and not trying to do like what, what React has done and like what the composition API and Vue has done. Because I, I don't think those have to be the eventual answers that every framework arrives at, which is kind of how it's feeling, right? Kind of feels like the the maintainers and, and contributors just felt feel like, oh, well, if we want to have that kind of performance and we want to have that similar experience in Svelte, we kind of have to do the same thing that was done in the Vue Composition API or like the Hooks API. And I just think that maybe we can come up with something that's a bit more innovative, original, and also like maintains its simplicity. I think that's my, that's my main takeaway is that's, that's what I would hope for. Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. Uh, this video is gonna be my take on runes, uh, which are a new thing coming to Svelte version five. Uh, first up, shout out to Mattia over at Joy of Code. If you really want to watch a video on how uh, runes work and like why they even were created, this video is really good. It's only eight minutes long. Go give it a watch. But here's here's my take and also like a basic overview of, of what they are. Um, so you can see here, this is what Svelte components look like today. Uh, this article kind of runs through how essentially there's a lot happening behind the hood, even with the code that you're looking at. Like this right here is actually a, a reactive uh, assignment. Like we are changing a variable that's going to get reflected in the view. And uh, it's just transparent to us. There's nothing that indicates that except for the fact that this is a Svelte component. Um, and so that's one of the major... Potential gripes that people might have with Svelte is that a lot of times, just by looking at code, you can't really tell what it's doing unless you actually know about the reactivity system. Um, so that that is a thing. Um, and so they've introduced these things called runes. I will say runes in a in a way are kind of like it, it is just a it's just a, a term to describe something that's already been uh, that's our, we've we've already seen and that, that have come up in other front end frameworks. So. Um, I, I think it's pretty, it's pretty good marketing, right? Because it's, it's a word that we haven't heard before. You have things like signals and, uh, and like effects and, and all of these in like hooks and stuff like that. Uh, runes are basically just, uh, coming from a view background. Runes are the composition API for Svelte. So if you're coming from a view, view background, you know that in view version three, they introduced these composition functions that basically gave us reactivity outside of components. That's what runes are. And they just have a custom name for, for marketing, which I, I think is totally fine. I think the word hooks could complete would be completely accurate to describe what runes are as well. Um, just like in the view composition API, those functions could be thought of like as hooks. Uh, but he, here's an example of, of one of these runes, this dollar sign state function, where now instead of just having a regular variable declaration, you now use dollar sign state. And that is a clear indicator that this is a reactive variable. Um, and that's one of the first runes that you're going to see is that instead of just defining the variable as is, you use dollar sign state, and then that now indicates to Svelte that this should be a reactive variable. Um, and I think that's fine. I, I think, yeah, so we think, so America 2050 is asking, so Felt is turning, Svelte is turning into React. I think what's happening is, like, uh, uh, the creators and maintainers of Svelte are realizing the limitations of the current system and have settled on a solution that is very similar to what we have in React and also what we have in the Composition API in Vue. So that's kind of where we're at. Like basically, Svelte is a year or two behind where Vue was, and Vue uh, was a year or two behind where React was. So it's all these frameworks kind of just like catching up and, and copying off of each other, like or turning into each other like Late Key is saying. Um, yeah. And yeah, so uh, Veeb is mentioning Watch Rich's video. Definitely do that as well. I mean, the blog po post also talks about why they're needed. Um, there there are certain scenarios where the code isn't as apparent. I think this, this um, not this one, we'll show, yeah, we'll show this one. Because one of the, so we, in the code examples, we showed reactive assignments where if you set a variable, it's going to automatically update. And if anywhere that references it, we'll get that latest value of the variable. But there's this other thing in Svelte, uh, which is a reactive statement, where essentially if you label a statement with this, if its dependencies change, this variable will get recalculated. But the thing to note, and one of the limitations are, this line of code will actually only rerun if width changes. 
But you can see if you look at the actual function implementation, it's dependent on both width and height. So the, the bug in this code is that this line of code will not rerun if height changes, even though that's probably what your intention was. So the answer to that with runes are to basically have a computed function uh, and an effect function, very similar to what you see in Vue's composition API. Whereas now, instead of like just defining the function standalone, uh, you create a derived value, which has an expression inside of it that's going to rerun uh, any time those dependencies change. And then you have an effect function, which can rerun any time uh, some of its dependencies have changed. Um, so... Yeah, that's, I mean, that's it. That's, that's basically like you, you get these functions, dollar sign derive, dollar sign state, and they allow you to express the things that you normally do in Svelte, but in a more explicit way, and also a way that potentially doesn't introduce bugs because um, it's a bit more explicit. But my, my whole thoughts and arguments kind of still stand. Like it's basically just turning into the view composition API, which was like views form of doing hooks in Vue like we like we had in React. So that's that's a thing. Um, and what else do I want to say? Oh, yeah. And so the, the other thing about like, so right now in Svelte, if you wanted reactivity inside of your component, you would do it like I showed you. You basically would uh, define your variables, modify your variables. Everything's good to go. But if you need something beyond that, you would use a reactive declaration or a reactive statement. If you wanted reactivity outside of a component, you would use a Svelte store. So the store gives you things like uh, you basically can create a writable store that has subscribe and update functions, but this can exist outside of a component. So this would essentially allow you to implement like global state management or like reusable code that still has reactivity. And that's the old way of doing it. But now, since they have they're introducing runes. Basically, now that's a standardized API, so you don't need Svelte stores anymore. You can just use the state function to implement state and you know, like getters and setters and stuff like that. Um, so uh, that in in one way that's a good thing because now the way that in well not in Svelte version five the way that you do reactivity inside of a component will be the same way you do reactivity outside of it. So it's kind of like a standardization of that of that API. Um, but ultimately, as someone who really likes Svelte, the reasons I like it are because it, it on the surface, it does just look like JavaScript, right? I like the fact that we don't have special methods. And I, and I like the fact that uh, typically when we're working in any front-end framework and we're trying to implement a component like this, like, this is what we're trying to do. Like, this is like the simplest representation of having some variable, some uh, function that gets called to change that variable, and then some way of representing it in the UI. This, like, in its, in its purest, simplest form, this is one of the, the, the simplest ways to, to look at that. Like, if you com even if you compare this to, like, Vue and, and React and stuff like that. So, um, my thought is, like, I, I guess it was an eventuality because, uh, yes, there, there were situations where uh, this syntax will not work for what you intend to do. So I think it makes sense that something like this would get introduced because um, like that's, that's why syntax like this got introduced into Vue because there were situations where the existing system didn't work. Um, and so that makes sense. But I, I, I think the potential misstep here is um, that this is why people like Svelte. The moment you start introducing these little hook functions, it becomes more and more like React. And uh, we get away from this, we, we get away from this simplicity. So like that's that's basically my argument is, sure, I get it that we need it in some scenarios, but if you start to make that the standard, it's going to, people are going to be less uh, interested in switching to Svelte. Now you could argue that in the other direction, whereas now that we have these little functions that look like hooks, React developers are more inclined to use something like uh, Svelte. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's a thing. Uh, and, I th and I think the other thing is like, it's like saying that these are, are, these are signals and like Knockout has been doing it since uh, 2010, but Vue has also been doing it since Vue version two, which uh, was uh, just like a few years after that. Um, I think like Vue gets left out in these conversations a lot, which is very interesting, um, but, we're seeing the same thing happen. So I don't know. What's, what's the conclusion here? 
seems fine. I like I'm still I, I could still write components using this API, but ultimately I don't like that now it now it looks less like plain old JavaScript. Now I now I have to use these extra functions. Um, I will say, like, if you read this blog post and you watch Rich's video, um, he does talk about, like, yeah, in Spelt 5, the article says, you will still be able to write code this way, but this is just a new API that gets, gets introduced, and it seems like it kind of will be the thing that will be pushed in the documentation, because there was another section in this article that mentions uh, this will be under the old stuff label in the documentation and the new stuff will be kind of pushed as the main way to do Svelte. Um, yeah. So yeah, again, my initial reactions is like, I, I kind of think it's a mistake. Like if, if you look at the amount of backlash in the, in the view community, when they switched to the composition API and like, and also how long it took for third party libraries to like catch up and, and do the view three style things. Um, it was kind of detrimental to Vue, Vue itself. Like a lot of people jump ship to, to Svelte because of that. And now they're doing this. So like, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't know what's going to happen. But um, I will say, I, I, ultimately, I don't like it. <laughs> like, ultimately, like I, I want this, right? I, I want to be able to write components like this. And in the scenarios where I have complex dependencies and complex state updates, I'll reach for something else. But ultimately, I want to be able to write components like this. So yeah, that's my take on it. Again, watch Rich's video, read the article, watch Joy of Co's video. Uh, but that's all I have to say about that. All right, so I'm going to read your comments now. I'm going to see a lot of you. Yeah, someone might use something like hooks, but I'm talking crazy. Yeah, so I, I think that's the other thing is if you just called them hooks, honestly, honestly, from a marketing perspective, that might have been better because then you really would have get re got, would have gotten React developers to be like, oh, it's just hooks, but now it's felt. I like that. I think that's the other thing is like someone that has been just entrenched in the React ecosystem and entrenched in functional components and use effects and stuff like that. This code looks more approachable to them because that's what they're used to. Um, they're, they're so deep in it, right? They're so deep in just like this, this functional aspect uh, that they, they forget how simple things can be. But, you know, that's, that's, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess that's something I didn't get into is runtime versus compile time. Um, and I guess I'm I'm approaching it more from the the developer perspective as well because I don't think like I don't I didn't think about performance in any of these things like I care more about in this case the developer experience of a very simple API to create the thing that I'm always trying to do versus uh, having to learn the the Rune API or like the Hooks API and stuff like that. What's the difference when with computed function with memoization? Memoization. Um, ultimately, it, the the resulting code is is similar. Like, and and that's the other thing is like I, I like you I, I you would think about um, these labeled statements kind of like as computed computed values here. Um, so like this area is essentially a computed property that gets memoized to only be updated if width or height changes. Like it doesn't it doesn't change on every render or anything like that. It's only if its dependencies change. So this is like a computed property. And so that's the other thing is dollar sign derived is literally computed. And so like if you look at the composition API with Vue, they have a function called computed works in a very similar way. To me, it is interesting though and you, you may not have noticed this, that we're passing in an expression. We're not passing in a function, which means there's some interesting compiler stuff happening where uh, this is this expression is going to get wrapped in a function that needs to run, right? Because, well, and, and honestly, if I, if I had to say, like, my criticisms of this API, this might be one of them. Unless there's a bug in the code, this does not look uh, natural to a JavaScript developer because... Uh, you know that this is an expression and you would think that that gets resolved down to like its actual value. And so if you're passing the actual value into derived, how does it know that it can recalculate it? But if it's working the way that they say it is, we're actually giving it an expression that the compiler is going to keep around in the compiled code to actually rerun that expression. Um, so also like, so this is a little, a little deceptive as well. I think if you're just a, a normal JavaScript developer, um, the best part is that all of this is opt-in. Yeah, but I think it's going to be a similar thing that happened with 
the composition API in view where it is opt in, but now all of the, like you, you now have a fracturing of the community where some people really prefer to do it the other way. And some people prefer to do it this way. Um, and then that bleeds into like documentation only being really good for one thing, but not the other thing. And then libraries out there being supporting one thing and not the other thing. So I think it's going to, it's going to be an issue. Yeah. As a React developer, understandable code frightens me. Yeah, I think that's kind of the point I was getting at is like the more React you write, the more entrenched you get in this like functional aspect of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's the other thing is like you because Svelte is a compiler. It's possible that they could have fixed the dollar sign thingy <laughs> like like they could have uh maybe i mean I, I like obviously i don't know the implementation details and how tricky it would be to actually like fix the compiler for those situations um but it seems like it could basically like traverse the tree of function calls and then like get your list of dependencies based on that but that's probably a lot harder to do learn the api or learn the hidden behavior i prefer the first let let keep things obvious instead of hiding the magic behind the curtain yeah I, yeah I could see it coming from both places, but I think what I also, I think what I care about more, like, is is a a simpler code base, right? Like, if, if this code works and uh, it's fairly f easy for, like, unfamiliar developers of Svelte to understand, I would prefer it over something that's, like, a bit more, dis like, uh, a bit more... Um, concrete in that you can see what it's doing exactly in the code um because then that makes the that that would require more boilerplate and it things it makes things a little bit more messy it feels like yeah so it behaves like a lambda a function where you're writing the return statement yeah i think that's what i was getting at is with this dollar sign derived thing you have to think about this as if you're passing in a function like not like you're passing in an expression did not expect as much division as there on these changes, to be honest. Yeah, but I, I think that's I think that's the thing is like you you have different audiences for Svelte. Like some people only care about the performance, and so like that's why they switched to Svelte. Some people care more about the developer experience. I mean, you could argue that it, you really should just be caring about your end product for your users, and ultimately your users probably care more about performance than they do developer experience. But in my experience the performance gains of these and the types of apps that I build are like inconsequential. So I would prefer a better developer experience. Yeah. Runes are technically macros and not hooks, which is why just passing an expression directly is, yeah. So this is a compiler macro to turn this into a, uh, a function. Yeah. So that's my take on it. Hopefully, uh, gave you a little bit of insight and also make maybe a different perspective than what you're seeing from other people. Cause like, I don't, it's like, it's not, I don't, it's not all good. I, I think there should be a focus on simplicity and not trying to do like what, what React has done and like what the composition API and view has done. Because I, I don't think those have to be the eventual answers that every framework arrives at, which is kind of how it's feeling, right? Kind of feels like the the maintainers and, and contributors just felt feel like, oh, well, if we want to have that kind of performance and we want to have that similar experience in Svelte, we kind of have to do the same thing that was done in the view composition API or like the hooks API. And I just think that maybe we can come up with something that's a bit more innovative, original, and also like maintains its simplicity. I think that's my, that's my main takeaway is that's, that's what I would hope for.